So, I'm probably not going to make a lot of videos on white nationalism. It's not really going to be a topic I, I spend a great degree of time on. And you'll probably understand why by the end of this video, because I don't really think that it will ever obtain a great degree of political power. Now, of course, I, I could be wrong if, you know, a couple of years from now or even a couple of months from now, you know, white nationalists are, you know, on TV and people are all like, yes, yeah, and they're snapping and clapping for them. Then, and then I'll be, I'll be wrong, but uh, the way it's going, the way I see white nationalism, it seems to be a dare I say, niche ideology that I don't think will go anywhere outside of the internet. And even then, I think that it will fizzle out eventually due to its uh, complete lack of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, practicality. I'm going to spend this video explaining why I don't really think that white nationalism will become a strong political force um, and why I think it lacks all practicality. So, yeah, there we go. So, where should I start off with? I know where I'll start off with. I'll start off by talking about IQ. The thing that I find very interesting about uh, the topic or the subject of IQ um, differences in racial groups is um, well, point one. The fact that um, it, it is a bit, dare I say, obvious that you would find uh, differences in different populations of people's IQ because you find differences in people's IQ as individuals as well. So finding differences in people's IQ is just kind of something you would find to be reasonable. Um, the thing that really gets me about the topic of the subject of uh, race and IQ are two things. Um, and that is, number one, I don't really know what can be done with that information, if anything can be done with that information. And two, um, the complete lack of being able to do anything with said information. Now, of course, it sounds like I, I just said the same thing uh, twice, but um, I'm going to clarify what I mean by that uh, now, actually. So the thing about IQ, from what I've read consistently, is that it's pretty consistent within uh, racial groups. But the thing that really got me the most about IQ is how uh, if it, it's people who study this believe it's mostly genetic. And if it is true that IQ is a mostly genetically determined factor, and there's not really much you can do to change your IQ, well, then what are we supposed to do with this information? I mean, it just kind of seems it is what it is, right? I mean, if someone is predestined to have a low IQ, well then, well then what are we supposed to do for them? I don't know. I don't, I don't see any white nationalists explain what's to be done. So what I meant when I said at first that there's not much that can be done with that information, I mean that you can't really change anyone's IQ. So, I don't really see much use in talking about it too much. I mean, I, I understand the theories that people try to create around IQ, which I'll get into in a second, but overall, as far as actually trying to create government programs, or I don't even think you could create a government program to do anything about that, uh, changes in the educational system, I've never seen anyone actually even suggest that that should be a thing. When I say anyone, I mean white nationalists. I don't, I don't see them actually saying we should do anything with this information. In fact, the interesting thing, whenever the topic of IQ is brought up, it's usually always surrounded with this air of the mainstream media doesn't want us talking about this. Uh, people don't want us to talk about IQ. But look at us. We're going to talk about it. We're going to say that, hey, here are the differences. But I'm always like, well, okay. And that's it. I can't just, you know. See, the thing that gets me is, like, even if we talk about the average IQ of people, it doesn't tell me anything about an individual person. So knowing the average IQ of different racial groups of people does not tell me about one person that I met at the time. And even then, you'd probably spend most of your life, probably, more accurately, you probably almost always will spend most of your life never knowing your own IQ, let alone the IQ of other people around you. So, I mean, I, I just cannot see its practicality. What's even worse still, is I've been told numerous times that the original invention of the IQ score in the first place was really more just China showing off your academic performance more than it was showing off your degree of intelligence. And even then, what I've learned even more is that IQ really more equates to your ability to problem solve and processing power than really is just how intelligent you are as a person. So, I mean, I mean, it's, it's important to know, I guess. I mean... I guess it's important to know because, I mean, IQ is a good uh, indicator or predictor of someone's life success. However, if you can't change their IQ, well, then it seems that they're just kind of predetermined to do whatever they're going to do and just kind of fail or succeed in life. And if that's the case, then 
then, then what's the point? What, what can we do for these people if nothing? So ultimately, when it all comes down to it, whenever I see white nationalists talk about IQ, it just seems that they just kind of use it as a as a as an ego boost. If I'm going to be completely honest, it doesn't really seem like they can do anything with the information, or they will do anything with the information. It just seems, I mean, hey, we have a higher average IQ than other minorities or just minorities in general. So to conclude why I brought up the whole topic of IQ again, it's because I don't find uh, anyone who is of the white nationalist persuasion to be able to do anything with said information, nor do I see them bringing up any solutions or bringing up anything worth practically solving any problem with it. I, I just, they don't, they don't do anything with the information. It's just all I'm trying to say. It, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's a waste of time because, I mean, it is interesting to know, I mean, the general IQ of people, but for the most part, it, it, it's not going to be helpful when dealing with individuals. And, I mean, I don't see what you intend on doing with the information to begin with. So, so moving on from that point there, I think another thing that really gets me about white nationalism and why I think it lacks practicality is, is the white ethno state that they desire in the first place. Now, I'm an American. So perhaps people who are in Europe, you know, maybe this holds a lot more weight or a lot more water. I, I, I think uh, the white ethno state in, in a European country is reason I, reasonable, I guess. Um, but in America, not so much because, I mean, America, if you look at the, the historical context of America in general, I mean, one, it, was, it wasn't a white country. I mean, it was invaded and conquered and, and taken over by white people, sure, but I mean... It's, wasn't a white country. It wasn't even really much of a country back when, you know, when it was just, you know, just tribes doing whatever they were doing. More than that, I mean, the, the bedrock of America, I mean, there's no way, it's unavoidable at this point. I mean, just genetically, we're, we're all pretty mixed, or at least I'm evidently and clearly mixed. I'm not fully an, an, an African person. And, and in fact, even the term African American has is, is actually been really silly to me because, like, I, I I wasn't born in Africa. You know, I only know America. Like, like you you notice it's interesting. You don't really call white people European Americans. You just call them Americans. But you gotta separate black people. It, it's really strange to me. You even have to separate Native Americans, but calling them Native Americans. It's it's really weird. But if you look at the actual context of America, I mean, there's lots of different people of different races and cultures and backgrounds. There's actually even the interesting thing about America even then is even culturally. There's different cultures between the North and the South. I mean, so with America, we're all pretty unified in the state in the sense that we have the, you know, the central federal government. But in terms of culturally, I mean, we're still different cultures, different people all over the place. Um, and for the most part, these people seem to be getting along just fine. For the, again, for the most part, obviously there's some problems. But talking more about the idea of the, uh, the white ethno state, it's just not something that seems to hold much water in America because you'd have to remove large populations of people in order to create this so-called white ethnic state in America. And I don't really see how you could possibly go about removing people. Um, I mean, good luck. I mean, like, if, if you really want to give the government that much power to just straight deport people who aren't white away, what's going to stop the, the government from deporting people? They have undesirable. I mean, I don't I don't really see where, where the protection would come from if that's what you want from the white ethnic state in America. But I don't really see how you would actually go about creating it. I, I think that's, that's really the thing that I'm trying to get to. How could you create the white ethno state to begin with? I, I just don't see how that would, would form. To be completely honest, um, you would you would have to remove large populations of people. Uh, where would you relocate them? I don't I don't know. I mean, first of all, could you could you even relocate people to another country and and that country accept them in the first place? Like, could you take all the black people in America, go back to Africa? Would Africans just be all like, yeah, sure, yeah, fuck it? Or would they be all like, wait a minute, these are all Americans. I don't. Why are we you know flushing them over here? Like, where's the practicality in this idea of, of relocating people or pushing people away or trying to create this? The state. I see. So, in the context of an American, I just, that's the only thing I could see white nationalists would want. But if that's, if, if white nationalists don't want to relocate large populations of people, I really don't understand how the fuck they could possibly be trying to create a, a white ethno state in America. Um, so, but like, it, the thing that really gets me though, there's another thing that really gets me is like, if, if you're a white nationalist and you really don't want to live, with uh, black people, like the actual population of black people in America is actually pretty small. As I, I, I can only, we only make up like 14% of the population at best. So honestly, if you really didn't want to live with any other black person, you could just move out to the Midwest. You know, you probably literally never see another black person again. So 
So that leads me to another thing uh, when it comes to white nationalism. And that is, not only can I not see how they would create a, a white ethno state in America, but my question is, where's the demand for the white ethno state? Now, this is actually something that guy T kind of made me think about a little bit. He's the first person who posed this question. But um, I'm going to pose it here again. Like, aside from white nationalists, obviously, how many white people really just kind of want to live in an, a, an environment with just only other white people i don't know if this is a desire for the, the vast majority of white people and the thing that's interesting about people in general which is obvious is that people have their own desires and own thoughts individually as well so it's really hard talking about the desires of entire groups of people to begin with but i mean seriously like as a group of white people uh, apart from the white nationalists how many of them truly and genuinely just only want to live with white people I don't know. I don't know where the demographic... I mean, it could be high. I mean, it's true. It, it, it genuinely could be 80% of the population of white people in America just only want to live with other white people. It, it could be that way. Maybe just in secret or whatever, but it just doesn't It just doesn't seem fathomable, at least to me. Now, I live in the South, so I mean, there's, you know, most black people are kind of concentrated here, but white and black people in the South seem to just kind of, you, you know, it is what it is. People are, are people, and that's how it's always been for most of my life. I haven't really dealt with much racism. I mean, I have, but... Not really a lot, and I've had, I, I mean, I currently have friends who are white anyway. Uh, I currently have friends who are black, so I mean, they're friends with each other. I don't really see much racial tension just like in my in my day-to-day -day life or with my friend groups or actually throughout the course of my life, really, which is really interesting, which I can talk about probably some other time. But for the most part, seems white and black people are okay with each other. I don't really know how many white people demand or don't want to live with black people. I don't want to live with Latino people or Asian people. I, I, it could be high demand, but I just, I don't see it. I don't see the normal population of white people really honestly want this. It, it does seem to be pretty niche, if I'm going to be honest. So going off of the point of, I mean, I don't know how many people, white people want this. My question is like, what exactly is the white ethno state supposed to solve and does that even guarantee that most of the white people that live there will even agree or even like each other? Now I, I imagine that the point of the white ethno state is to solve racial tensions between people. So people, so because everyone is all homogenized and, they, and they're all the same color, they're all the same race, you won't have any racial problems. Yeah, sure. I mean, in the same way that if you never drive a car, you can't get into a car accident. I mean, yeah, in so facto, that cannot happen. However, you can still get heart disease if you never drive a car. And you see what I'm saying? I mean, in other words, the inevitability of problems between populations of people will always occur, even if you kind of snuff out one danger or the other. So my question is, like, is it really worth the effort of creating a white ethno state for only white people if it only solves one problem? which doesn't even seem to be like much of a problem in America. But more than that, if it only solves one problem, but it doesn't fix any other problem that occurs in society. I mean, you could have a nation of only white people and they could still be a bunch of degenerates. They could still be a bunch of lazy jerks. They could still dislike each other. And the thing that's interesting is you could have a country of only white people and you could still have liberals and conservatives still battling it out in a culture war trying to figure out what's the best way to run society. And if that's the case, you have indeed solved the racial issue. There's no more problems with race, but you haven't solved any other problem. So is, is the white ethno state really worth all of that to only solve one issue that can be solved without the effort of trying to create a homogenized group of only one people because it seems to me that honestly people in america honestly they, they don't care all that much about race i mean at least in my experience and i can only speak from my experience but i haven't dealt with much racism in my life and it doesn't seem like it's reasonable to separate large populations of people in order to solve that one aspect when really all you could honestly do it's just kind of raise people to be well and to like other people and to enjoy people's company. I mean, like children aren't born racist, you know, if you just teach them to, to love the individuals around them and to be kind, then, then they will be. And that seems to be a much easier, much more practical solution than trying to create a, an environment of only one racial group of people. And then that kind of leads me to one thing that I kind of wonder, and that is, well, what exactly even constitute like white people in general? Because like you have different brands of white people in the same sense, you actually have different brands of black people as well. I mean, white people, you got Germans, you got Spaniards, I think Spaniards count. I know you definitely got French people, you know, obviously you have people from, you know, Great Britain, you got Irish people. You got all these different brands of white people in different flavors. I mean, like, 
So is is the white nationalist state for people who are the pale persuasion? It doesn't matter if you're Irish or German, or is it a specific white state for only you know Britons? I don't I don't really know how that works. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. And another thing that kind of gets me about the, the ethno state is like, do do mixed people like do they count as Europeans? Like like if, if they're like fifty one percent year of European descent, you know, and they're like forty nine percent like like African or like like Japanese, like. Can they still live in this area, or is it only like you gotta be mostly white? I don't really know. Does does that even matter? I don't know if it matters. I just, I'm just wondering. I'm just, I'm I'm genuinely asking that question, by the way. Like, where do mixed people like live? Do you have to go with the one drop rule, or is it a percentage? Because I don't get it. And so that kind of leads me to my final reason as to why I believe that the ideology of white nationalism, or at least the way people show white nationalism on the internet is prone to failure and lacks practicality and that is a lot of these people mock what they call normies so normal people who are just you know i don't know accountants or farmers or electricians like they mock these people they mock normies and more than they they mock normies they also uh, mock cucks they mock uh white men who i guess don't agree with them I, i'm not really entirely sure what constitutes a, a cuck in their mind because cuck has been used in so many different contexts to describe so many different people. I used to think that it just described like a weak willed or an effeminate male that just kind of lets people do what they want them to do, but they use cuck in so many contexts, I don't really get it anymore. And it actually kind of reminds me of an earlier point I was making because that would mean that the white nationalists would understand that all white people do not agree with each other if they mock cucks. So if you know all white people don't agree with each other, why would you still go through the effort of only trying to create an environment of only white people if the true problem that you have is ideological, not racial? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, the point that I'm making is they mock normies. And this is really strange to me because I would imagine that at the end of the day, the normies are the people you're trying to create the society for, right? And if that's the case, why would you mock these people and treat them like they're stupid or, or dumb or like they, they don't you know, know what they want? I mean, it's true, some people don't know what they want, but it's really strange to me when I see a bunch of people mock the individuals you're supposed to be, I would presumably, be saving or trying to help, right? Or I guess not. But the thing is, if the ideology is antagonistic towards the normal population of people, you're probably not going to get a lot of individuals to agree with you and really kind of help you out. So, I mean, honestly, I just don't see where the practicality is in mocking so-called normies when... When they're the people you're supposed to be helping. Scratch that. I said that was the last thing. But this is another thing I'm going to add as an addendum. And that is, uh, I don't really think that white genocide holds weight. Like, as as like a, as a, as a problem. And what I mean by that is, I, I understand that, that the, uh, the birth rate of white people is in decline. And that, you know, a lot of white people aren't reproducing. And I get that. But genocide at least as I understood it, kind of implied that someone or there's some force or something that is, you know, creating the death of white people. But if white people aren't dying, as opposed to they're just not making more of them, then you technically don't have a genocide because you technically don't have people existing at all, which would be the actual problem. So... I don't know. I, I think I guess white genocide is supposed to be inflammatory. I think that's the point, but it's not really accurate as a term. But even still, the thing that kind of gets me about white genocide is like, well, you realize that the obvious and simple solution to that is to just like have sex, right? Like, it's kind of all you really have to do. You just have to make people. You just it's kind of it's kind of really all you have to do. Hmm. So all in all, I don't really think that white nationalism will ever gain a great degree of political power, like, at all. I don't really think mocking so-called normies is going to help you gain traction anywhere. And even if you did gain traction, I don't think white nationalism could go anywhere because it lacks all practicality. I understand the motivations of white nationalists, like, wholeheartedly. I truly and completely understand their motivations, and I understand why they feel the way they feel. I, I, I really do. I really get it. I really do, but... 
I don't think white nationalism is the solution that you're looking for. I don't think that it's practical. I don't think you can get anything out of it. I don't think over time people are going to resonate with your message and, and join you. I think it's pretty niche. I think only a certain brand of white people are going to agree with you. And if you don't end up having children, then your ideology is just going to die with you. And the truth of the matter is, I don't think a lot of white people want to just live with only white people. I mean, honestly, I think the greatest barrier for your white ethno state is other white people. I don't actually think it's other racial groups of people, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. But maybe I'll have to go into depth about that in some other time. Yeah. So that being said, man, I certainly hope you guys got something out today's video. And uh, if you did, man, go ahead and click the like button. If you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I will see you cool cats soon. Adios.